Hi guys. Okay, so today is Sunday, right? And this is Raquel. Today is Sunday. And so typically in, in Jamaica, Sunday staple dinner is rice and peas and brunch to chicken, right? Don't come and say rice and beans. You gotta say rice and peas, right? Anyways, um, so I have a friend who asked me if I knew how to cook. The disrespect. I was like, I was born on an island called Jamaica. I came out the womb cooking, okay? Nevertheless. Um, but today is not about cooking. This is not a cooking show, right? But I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself because I was asked the questions and I hope that I can learn some more, um, about you in the comments. Yeah. So I was asked, how did I come to wear so many hats? You know, because I was told Jamaicans got 10 jobs. You have 10 jobs. I'm like, no, I have 11. All right. I'm kidding. I don't have 11 jobs, but how did I get to be an attorney, a law professor, an author, and a publisher? So, I would say the very first thing would be that um, I was a lawyer first, right? I, ever since I was 13, I knew that I wanted to speak for those who couldn't speak for themselves. And I looked up to my daddy, right? Um, he used to... I would describe him as a revolutionary man. He's no longer with us. And um, I would just watch how he would infuse himself in the lives of the less fortunate. And so he became a voice for them through his coaching, right? And I've always wanted to be like that, where I use my skill set that my God rendered unto me to enhance the life of others. So I remember when I was a little girl, I went to a tree and I carved out the number of um, steps it would take for me to become an attorney. And um, and so, you know, it's four years of college and then, you know, the three years of law school. And so um, it was really interesting because by the time I get to the attorney, <laughs> I was no longer next to the tree, right? Um, you know, I had left Jamaica and I was going to America, but um, I made it, right, with much difficulty, right, I may add. And so I remember when I was in law school one time, one of my professors said to me, um, I don't understand, you know, why you're here, right? Um, and so, you know, she said you would be better being a paralegal, right? And so um, your people didn't write well or speak well or something that effect. And I don't know who she meant when she said people. Did she mean immigrants? Did she mean women? Did she mean the underclass? Did she mean the fabulous? Like, I don't know what she meant when she said people, but I know she meant it as an insult. Nevertheless, um, so when she said that, and she mentioned that, you know, I couldn't write and, and all this stuff, what that did was that it was like fire shut up in my bones. And I said, you know what? I'm going to show this woman that I can make it to law school. And so, you know, I went in and I did deep. And to make a long story short, I've been an attorney for 23 years. And um, it's funny because... <clears throat> Writing is a big part of my life, whether it's scholarly writing or um, my novel or what have you. Um, I write now. And so what she did just created a spark in me, right? So that's why I get to be the lawyer part. And then, <clears throat> of course, once you're a lawyer, it's not so hard to be a hard professor, right? <laughs> just kidding. Um, so once I was a lawyer... You know, you start out with um, teaching law as an adjunct here. And so I got my start at Mega Evers College at City University of New York. Shout out to CUNY. Yay, I'm my student. And so I started from there. And then um, the president at the time, um, Edison O. Jackson, President Jackson, he gave me my first shot of becoming a professor. 
and then from there I went on to I moved right I moved from New York and I came down to DC and um, I was I wasn't even looking for this job right but my friend called and said hey Raquel you know there's this job um, where they're hiring some Dina students and I thought well I looked at it and it was everything I did at my other job when I wasn't being a professor or a lawyer anyway I applied for it and I got the job and then from there I transitioned back into my faculty role right so that's how the faculty thing came into play how did the author thing come into play well when I left New York and I came down here um, actually let me back up while I was in New York um, my ex-husband said to me, um, you know, you are this great storyteller. Why don't you just write a novel, right? Why don't you turn your stuff into a novel? And he would always say, just write me one novel. Just write me one novel. And I promise I will leave you alone. I will leave you alone. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I wrote it and I said, Will you leave me alone? He's like, no, no, no. What the other one? What the other one? <laughs> Anyways, um, so I started to shop around my novel, and I didn't have any agent. You know, I didn't really have anyone, and so I came across. Um, somehow, I I forgot how it got there, but it got to the senior editor of Random House, and she's like. Um, you know, I read your book and everything, but in order for you to be signed, you need to have a following, right? Whether you have a movie deal or you already have all these people who are behind you. And so, you know, you have to go and get us like 25,000 copies or something and then come back. I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? So then I remember that I was a lawyer. <laughs> I was a business lawyer. So I created a publishing company. And I self-published my book. But when I did that, I didn't really expect anything to happen, right? But then something started to happen. People started to read the book. And then it picked up until we started the process of adapting it into screenplay to try to make a movie. And then my partner died. And... um. But the publishing company was still there. So folks start to call and authors start to come. And so we started doing what publishing houses do. We just started to publish, right? So that's how I became a publisher and an author, right? So that's just my four of what I do in a nutshell. It didn't plan, um, wasn't planned. And so, you know, it's, it's just life, right? You start out with one thing in mind or you think you have an agenda. And then once you just um, let faith take over, then your life starts to go into a course that you didn't expect it to go, right? You didn't plan it. You can't really plan um, every detail of your life. Some folks say you plan and then God laugh at you. But, um, but that's how I came to be Raquel the attorney, professor, author, and publisher, right? And so that has been, mm, I've been a professor and an attorney for about 23 years or so. And then I'm often a publisher for about maybe 10, I think. But that's my life in a nutshell. And um, my only advice to you at this point is to Whatever you set out to do, just give it your all. Yeah, give it your all. Like, I'm going to give this brown stew chicken my all right now, all right? And then I'm going to come back to you in a little bit and show you how it looks in the end, okay? And the rice and peas. Do not say rice and beans. The energy making can hear you. Rice and peas, okay? All right, so I'm going to see you in a minute when I, when I finish my magic, my magic touch. Yeah? Okay. So we are finished with the Jamaican staple dinner. This is the rice and peas, as you can see. Some has already been shared out. And um, this is the 
brown stewed chicken yeah and um so you know to my friend who wonder well how you like them apples huh anyways and this is what it looked like on the plate Take care of yourself, take care of your family, take care of your friends, take care of the dog, right, Bella? Take care of the cats, take care of your turtle, fish, all that stuff, and I'll talk to you later, okay? Cha-cha. Come here, Bella. Say hi to the people. She's like, no, I want my treats. Cha-cha, cha-cha.